So it's my honor to uh, introduce our next guest, which is uh, Ms. Uh, Sandrine Dixon de Clef. And uh, Sandrine was recognized by GreenBiz as one of the 30 most influential women across the globe, driving change in the low carbon economy and promoting green businesses. She's the first female co-president of the Club of Rome and a lecturer and at uh, the University of Cambridge. It's an honor to have you uh, online, Sandrine. And um, we'd like, we thank you so much for um, helping us out during the project um, because many people don't know that behind the scenes, behind the curtains, there's a lot going on and I, we really value and appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you're muted right now. I'm sorry. There we go. Yes. What I wanted right. to say is after looking at the beautiful interactions and the incredible words of Dr. Jane Goodall, uh, it's very hard to, to follow the lineup of incredible people that you've had and the unbelievable work that you're doing with uh, young people all over the world. I'm, I'm the president of an organization that has been talking about climate change, but also the importance of changing the way in which we interact with our planetary boundaries for the last 50 years. And when I see the depth of the work that you're doing, it reminds me just how important it is to bring back the words of many of our esteemed members of the Club of Rome, but also to remember that many of us as young people ask us, why have you not done more? Many of us have tried and, and have done uh, some work in this area, but clearly not enough. And, and so what I wanted to do was to bring in a little bit of history as to learnings of how we can move forward and build better bridges, collaborate and bring in the voice of the youth and intergenerational dialogue and the knowledge that we're able to exchange and the storytelling and the different projects that you have in order to truly make this what we're calling a decade of action because we know that for the next 10 years, we have to get it right. We have no time to waste. When the Club of Rome was started in 1968, I was two years old, so that shows my age. And at that time, what the members of the Club of Rome were talking about was exactly what we're talking about today, and we lost 50 years. In fact, Dana Meadows said, something which many of us would have thought would have been said by Barack Obama or anybody else just this past few years. This supreme effort is a challenge for our generation. It cannot be passed on to the next. The effort must be resolutely undertaken without delay and significant redirection must be achieved during this decade. Can you imagine that was said in 1968 and now we're saying the same thing. But what was also said at that time and what I like to remind us all of and was said so beautifully in your students that were just interviewed now is that we cannot have arrogance and ignorance in our world. If we think education is expensive, try ignorance. Ignorance is even more expensive. And we've seen from the examples that have been given the importance of schooling in passing on not only education around climate change, but also knowledge and values and storytelling around how we should be people on this planet and preserve this planet that is our home. That is absolutely fundamental. And we've seen the way in which it has destroyed the United States. And I'm very hopeful with a new administration that we will get away from fake news and, and belittling knowledge and bring back knowledge as the essence of how we can actually move forward and also kindness, may I ask. Climate change is so important, but today it's even more important. It's important because it is part of what we call the convergence of tipping points. What we are seeing between climate change, biodiversity loss, and now health pandemics. And we need to bring students 
and educate the leaders of the future to understand the complexity of the interrelationships between climate change, biodiversity loss, and health pandemics, which we know are created by those two together, climate and biodiversity loss. We also need to bring forward, again, the importance of what it means to be a human being on this planet, to move away from the arrogance of thinking that we are better than all the other species. And Dr. Jane Goodall is the first to remind us that even if we are so-called the most intelligent species, we are definitely not the wisest. And I am sure that many of the students that are watching today and that go through your programs can see climate change directly in their lives, whether they are going further in order to get water in an African country or in other countries, whether they see complete urban development and then the destruction through more typhoons, through more hurricanes, through more flooding. We know that if we don't all come together at a time when we are seeing these very complex challenges before us, we will not get there. And if we don't develop the leaders of the future, we won't get there either. I've spent 30 years of my professional career working together with business communities, with policymakers, and with civil society to address pollution to air, land, and water in a variety of different ways. And yes, we should have known sooner that we had to work more on climate change. But now we do not have that time. So what can we concretely do together to learn from the past and build a better future? Because for the moment, as we are in this COVID pandemic, we talk about building back better. But we know that we can't build back an iceberg. We know that we can't build back all those forests. What we have to do is figure out what are the solutions that will make us stronger, both facing future crises and also building the future that we owe to generations coming behind us. Part of the learnings from Paris, for example, and the Paris Agreement, which I know some of the students are learning about, is that we were able, as a collective community of governments who were ambitious, of scientists who had the science, of businesses who knew what real leadership was about, come together with civil society and propose ambitious timetables and targets. We are calling for limiting, obviously, to 1.5 degrees our temperature increase. And we know that probably by 2030, we will already be, unfortunately, at 1.5. That means we may lose some of our islands and the people that live on those islands as water creeps up. But it also means that the challenge now is we must come together, exactly as you've shown in your videos, cases of people coming together in communities and students who are very much working together to ensure that they bring forward real climate action. Together, we were able to have a, an agreement in Paris. And I cannot tell you enough that feeling in all of us when we had succeeded, sitting in that room when actually the negotiator of the Paris Agreement put down the gavel and said, we have an agreement. Many of us cried, government leaders, business leaders, civil society, scientists, all together. But this was five years ago. And although we had an agreement from Europe, and now we have one from China, and in fact, I've just seen a tweet from Biden. If he is actually going to be president, he will immediately bring the United States back into a climate agreement and the Paris Agreement. But still, we need to act even faster. We can't just talk about 2050. We actually have to talk about zero carbon now, zero loss of nature now, linked to zero pandemics and zero poverty. Vanessa talked about the issue of poverty, as did Esmeralda. Dr. Goodall is talking about the loss of nature and the impact on species. And many of us are saying together, this is all connected. So what do we do next as a community of young people and of older people like myself? We have to bring together 
all of the actors. We need to bring together those that have a tendency, and I'm gonna use a few props if you don't mind, to surf the wave. Basically, I'm trying to, ah, oh, there we go. This is my surfer. And my surfer has a tendency, unfortunately, to wait until he acts. And that is not possible anymore. This is my driver. And my driver has a tendency to drive action, but sometimes forgetting that they need to bring more people behind them. This is the dreamer. And the dreamer is the visionary. And we need the visionary to guide us to where we need to go. We can bring these three together, but we must do it by converting the prima donna. It is the prima donna, those that are not ready, those that think that this is about the ego rather than the eco that are stopping us from moving forward. Because I'm going to say to you that each of us can make a difference, but we need to convince all of these different types of people, these different characters to come on the journey with us. We need to each reduce our own carbon footprint. And each of us can do that by ensuring that we stop using transport modes that are polluting, walk more, use a bicycle more, don't travel in big airplanes and use a lot of cars when we don't need it and public transport. We can change the way in which we eat. And definitely this is the Western diet that is killing us, eating too much meat that is actually depleting our land and water. We need to ensure that we also bring in the knowledge at all levels from primary school to university as to what individuals can do across their communities and across their schools. And that also means making your school net zero and holding your leaders accountable. And if you can, when you're old enough, voting for the right leaders. But most importantly, we need to remember one thing, and I'm going to end on this point. And I'm going to use one more prop. Because once again, in 1961, President Kennedy of the United States drove a mission to the moon. And this is Tintin's moon, for some of you who know the comic books, Tintin. I would say to you, we don't need a mission to the moon. Our mission is not to go elsewhere. Our mission is to protect the beautiful planet that we call home. And we can do that together. And yes, we the adults must work with the younger generations to find the solutions, but it is our responsibility to preserve this planet so that future generations can live happily and healthily on this planet in greater well-being. So Kun, thank you for everything that you are doing. I could not thank you enough and the beauty of the people that you have brought together behind your project and the strength of that collaboration and solidarity will hopefully enable us to really make a difference and create the best decade of action we've ever seen. Sandrine, we're so grateful for your words today. And you must be a true teacher because we all know it in the education world, not just say it, but show it. I was getting messages behind the scenes of everyone loving your rubber duck. So I, I just couldn't find where I <laughs> it was perfect. I think that, I think that uh, image will stay with everyone. And from my little part of the world here in the United States, your message um, is most appreciated, especially this week. So thank mm -hmm. you so kindly for being here with us. and. We look forward to um, continuing to following all of the work you all are doing for our planet. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And let's hope we have a real shift in the US. I'm happy to take questions if there's time. And if there isn't, I fully understand. So I know we have um, questions that have been streaming in on social media. So I'd love to ask you to check out the hashtag climate action day and you can see people that are sharing questions there. I am not able to see those on my side, but we will be sure to share them over with you as they pop up. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome and good luck with the rest of the day. And thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Bye-bye.